Hello, fellow bookquesters! It is I, Aaron the Bookquester. So, if you've been consistently, consistently watching my channel for throughout the hundred, couple hundred videos that I made, and you probably know this about me, I love fantasy books. I would prefer that genre over all the other genres that every single book has. Mystery, realistic fiction, historical fiction, and because of that, I've read, uh, let's say, around 70 fantasy series. And today, I'm gonna pick, my hand pick, my top 5 fantasy books from what I have read so far. And, well, it's, it's gonna be pretty, pretty interesting, so, well, let's get right on to it. Just before I continue on with the rankings, I'm just warning you guys that I'm not going to include any of the Rick Riordan book series, such as the Percy Jackson and the Olympians series, or Magnus Chase, Kane Chronicles, Heroes of Olympus, Trials of Apollo, or any of the J.K. Rowling books, you know, Harry Potter, hello, and also the Chronicles of Narnia. This is because it would be a tad bit unfair because if these books were in here, it would not be a game at all. On rank 5, we have the Mortal Instruments series. This series is an absolutely epic series, so if you haven't checked it out yet, well, you should go check it out. Although, be warned, it's a little bit dirty. But that's not the point. Cassandra Clare attempted something here that's... Well, no other authors tried to attempt and they kind of just chickened out of it because the basis of this book is within the Bible. So what that means is that in this book, the angels in the Bible is real and these humans have the angels power, kind of a little bit of the angels power and they fight demons, aka shadow hunters. And even I couldn't have attempted something like this to make the basis of Bible, like Percy ja and Percy Jackson, the basis of it is Greek mythology. It's just like Greek mythology is real and we have to deal with it. But in this book, the Bible is real and they have to deal with stuff from the Bible. And I think that's really just high level and that's why it's on rank five. On rank four, we have the one and only Warriors Saga. And Warriors has been my favorite book, one, ha one of my favorite book series since when I was in third grade. And, well, I just loved it. And the imagination, think about it. This Erin Hunter thought how these cats think, how these cats talk, how they behave. And she would have to know a lot about cats in general to write such a saga. And the amount of books she wrote. She wrote, well, I'm pretty sure five full series of Warriors, and she's working on six series right now. She also has various super editions and extra stories and manuals and guides to the Warrior world. This takes an immense amount of preparation. And another thing is that the build up from the third season of Warriors, which I believe is the power of three, to the fourth season of Warriors, which is the Omen of the Stars. And the build up is absolutely excellent, the foreshadowing and what's gonna happen next, what's gonna happen next. And well, it all started in act in the actual first, first book in the Warriors saga. And it's absolutely epic to remember, whoa, that villain, whoa, that villain, and the build-up from 3 to 5 was absolutely great, and well, now, let's get on to rank 3. And sitting proudly and tallly on rank 3, we have The Secrets of the Immortal Nicholas Flamel series, including many, many myths this series absolutely blew me away. It is one of my all-time favorite fantasy series. 
And personally, I love this book so much because it references at least one culture of every single culture and religion in the world. For example, Maya, Inca, American myths, and European myths, Chinese myths, Japanese Japanese myths, and just so many myths and gods and spirits all comboed into one absolutely epic series. And personally, this was my all-time favorite when it comes to myths because Percy Jackson had one myth. This has like 12,000 different myths. On the almighty second place, we have the Skull Degree Pleasant series. Starting with an exciting and energizing start with a girl who doesn't know that magic exists and is sarcastic and slightly annoying skeleton detective, this book continues on to be one of the greatest fantasy books that I have ever read. It would have t been taken first if, well, some other book hadn't interfered, but we'll get on to that later. This book is, well, the series is just unexplainable by words. You see, the amount of villains they fight, every single villain has their own color, has their own problem, and in the Skullduggery Pleasant series, you can't find a pattern. Well, what that means is that in some fantasy books and TV series, in every episode there's a new villain, well, it'll just, you, you'll be able to predict what happens next soon enough, and you find that after a little bit, everything becomes a little too obvious. But nope, not for this series. Every single book is so fresh and it's just completely new and completely unexpected. And along with all the humor and all the sarcasm that's in this book, it makes it one of the greatest books in history. Beef. Before we continue on to the all-awaited first place, here are some honorable mentions. Deltora Quest series was absolutely epic. Tamara Pierce's The Immortals Quartet is also a great book. And if we continue on to the next series, it's The Land of Stories. Obviously very epic and awesome imagination. The books of the beginning also very epic and very fun. These would all have made it into the top 10. And finally, The Ranger's Apprentice. If we were just talking about just books, just normal book series, and how much this would have gone straight to the top 5, but I don't really consider this a fantasy, so it didn't make it. I don't consider this a complete fantasy. I consider adventure and exploring, but not fantasy. It's all rooted to reality. That's why these didn't make it into the list. And now, finally, let's go on to first place. Ready for first place? And finally, let us reveal the first place! Inheritance Cycle. That's right, that is my choice of first place. The Inheritance Cycle showed us a world where, where dragon riders were extinct, where dragons were real. And it was an absolutely epic, awesome fantasy with its own magic and its own dragon magic. And it was so completely fresh and completely new. It was as fun as the Lord of the Rings trilogy, but perhaps even more unique because the magic comes from dragons and dragons are not necessarily evil. And that was my choice of first place. And that was it. My choice of my favorite fantasy book series is the top 5. Tell me if we agree with the rankings in the comment section down below. And well, if you disagree with me and you think, for example, the Mortal Instruments is way better than the Inheritance Cycle or the other way around or whatever, well, I guess that's your opinion and this is my opinion, so please don't badger me down in the comments if I'm being honest. And it was really fun, and it was also really torturous to try to see 
which book was the best because I really, really love fantasy and I lo enjoyed every single one of these books. And if this was a top 10, there should most of the honorable mentions would have been inside. And I mean, I really, it was really interesting to see what I liked. And I never really considered ranking fantasy books because, well, fantasy books is awesome and that's it. I don't have to rank them or anything. But, well, because of this, I think I'm glad to have a chance to rank these. And, like always, your book quester. Aaron the Bookquester. Thanks for watching and have a fantastic and bookish day.